So right now for a Nightwalker, I'm gonna run this type of persona. It's just simply for the sake of, you know, testing with the confined space and the incidents for you guys. Okay, now then here as you can see I'm gonna turn AI control off. This is Nightwalker. I'm currently in test server as well. As you can see, not the best when it comes to pin, but it's good enough for us to teleport to a survivor. Now, uh, the first thing we're gonna test is Tempest. So Tempest basically gives you movement speed. You're not gonna see it really from this 260ms, but we're gonna test it anyways. Press 1. So it slowly sucks the survivor in if the survivor isn't moving. Right, as you can see there. How much does it suck? Mm, let's see, so Perfumer is currently... You know what, let's let's suck Perfumer towards the tree first. Oh, never mind, sorry. I'm going to press it again. Let's suck Perfumer towards the tree first. Uh, this, a little bit more. Okay, that's enough. So Perfumer is like one Itaqua away from the tree. And we're gonna suck the perfumer out to see how far perfumer actually goes. So if the survivor is standing still, um from not from here, so it's one Itaqua away. So from here to all the way perfumer over there. So that's how far Itaqua can suck survivors. Is it, am I using the right phrase? I don't think suck is the right phrase, I won't lie. Okay, so that's one thing tested. So how far can Itaqua suck survivors? That's one thing tested. And as you can see on our bottom side of the screen as well, basically it just, you know, stacks the Tempest. Now for our second test, second test will be can Itaqua's Wind Gust, can Itaqua's Tempest go through walls? So as we can see, this is a wall here, Perfumer's there, let's try it. So it does seem like it goes through walls, so that's a nice thing as well. Let's teleport to another survivor. Mm, not you for now, okay, let's teleport towards the Cordy here. So as we can see, Cordy is in between the pallets. Now if I want to suck Cordy here, would Cordy... Would Cordy go to closer towards the wall, even if we don't see Cordy here? Okay, we did that. We can teleport through. It seems like Cordy was not sucked through, sadly. <laughs> Let's try it in this direction. Once again, it seems like Cordy wasn't sucked through. So what does this mean for Tempest? For high walls, how do you oh wait that is the speed boost sorry so for four 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 oh there we go one more okay so today we learned one thing let's just get perfumer close towards the another i'm gonna suck perfumer here a little bit a little bit more okay and a little bit closer towards this side stop Okay, so what we now learned is if you can see the survivor, if you can see the survivor and you use Tempest. Oh, right, oops. Can you? Ah, wait. As you can see, okay, it doesn't go through walls. It goes through walls on some certain occasions. Like if you can see the survivor through this mini, through this mini hole. But usually it wouldn't work, but usually it wouldn't work. What about here? What if you suck survivors here? It seems like this is also blocked, so for tie kiting it's gonna be a bit harder. In general. Yeah, so for tie kiting it seems like it'll be a bit harder in general to get survivors down. Let me just bring Perfumer here a little bit more. Okay, here. Now let's see if this wall works. Okay, now we learn something new. It doesn't go through walls with... Uh, it doesn't go through the walls that are taller than Tempest. So the wall either has to be shorter than Tempest or it's... Or it just doesn't work. So yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now we're gonna make Perfumer run. Now we're gonna make Perfumer run. And let's see how much it slows her down. I won't lie, this slows her down quite a lot. It does slow her down quite a lot as you guys can see. 
That is a survivor's normal movement speed, right? And we're just gonna catch up a little bit. And then let's press our Tempest. We can catch up pretty darn fast. We can catch up pretty darn fast towards a survivor. Let's do it again. See, see, th th oh wow, this is so hard for them to high kite. I missed that, lol. This is, this is so hard for them to take kite, wow. I'm surprised. So we get the hit there. Now let's try, try charge attacking with Tempest. So this slows survivors down. This basically allows you to catch up. And then when you basic hit, when you basic hit, when you basic hit, it cancels it. But like, as you guys see here as well, right? His charge attack is pretty... I think it's pretty short. Let's cancel the AI control and teleport to a survivor. Let's stand here. So he doesn't... So this is his range in general. This is his attack range. Okay, this isn't his attack range or charge attack. Still a little bit low. I feel like... I feel like his charge attack and his basic attack is the same range. Let's try charge attack here. Nothing. Charge attack here. But this is the same range. It's, it's okay, so his charge attack and his normal attack is basically the same range. It's very similar to Axe Boy and Geisha because of his... Tempest. Now then, we, since AI control is now off, let us do some more experiments. Next part is the speed buff when it comes to uh, vaulting windows and pallets. So we're gonna try vault over this window and see how fast we can vault over. So for the first time, this is the vault over animation. And it also locks the and it also locks the window. Let's try it again. I don't think his vaulting speed boost diminishes, diminishes over time, I won't lie. Okay, so basically what you can do is you can use a speed buff and then use Tempest to catch up the survivors even faster. I think that's great, I won't lie, I think that's great. So that's one thing we know. Now we want a survivor to put down pallets. So I want Cordy to put down a pallet, please. Okay, so Cordy has placed down a pallet. We're gonna try vault over this pallet now. Vaulting is alt. Ooh, it's very fast. It's very fast, it's very fast. And this vault speed doesn't diminish over time. As you guys can see, it doesn't diminish over time. It's still very fast. Uh, now let's try catch up to Cordy, right, with the speed buff. So we see Cordy, speed buff, Tempest. We basically move very fast. Itakwa is a high chase hunter. Oh, that's not bad then, but you just need to be very, be very careful of his hitbox, of course. Now the second part of all of it, of course, is his suction. As we guys can see, the radius does get thinner. And there's a small animation, but it doesn't suck if they're if you're not in range, of course. There, as you guys can see. Okay, let's see if we can suck perfume from here through the window. So you can basically suck survivors through windows. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, for skill two, skill two basically does it deal damage? Is the question when it dashes to survivors. Uh, we didn't dash properly. Oh. Skill 2 doesn't deal survivors, but it stops when it reaches the survivor. So let's do it again. There you go. Frame issues, there you go. Now let's let's try let's try pressing. So we're gonna press we're gonna press our speed buff. We're gonna change the caps lock. We're gonna suck the Cordy in while we're in speed buff. And then we can hit Cordy. So from what I understand, one of the combos that you could do, since you have the very fast vaulting buff, right, is equip the vaulting buff first, change, suction, because you can move during suction, and then vault over. But then you can do this in green pin, not, not with red pin. Red pin is just sad. Red pin is just sad overall. Let, let me try it again. So, two, caps lock, suction, 
Oh, for God's sake, I didn't change properly. Let's do it again. Two. Caps lock, suction. And then I can vault. So you can vault fast. So even with red pin, you can do it to a certain extent. Okay, so that's that's a nice thing. That's a nice thing. So what did we go over? We went over his skill 1 ability, his skill 2 ability, and I think it's good overall. I feel like Insolence is definitely needed with him. I feel like Insolence is definitely needed with him. There should be a Perfumer here. Like, if you guys can see, you can cancel it anytime you want. You can basically cancel it anytime you want, and it also slows the survivors down by a lot. But the problem with this, I think, really is just tight kiting in like small maps. In big maps, he's definitely really good because they're not because there's not like that many big areas like high walls. But with small maps, he has a huge problem. But like this is really fun to do. This is really fun to do. I won't lie. He stacks one stack of tempest every time. He he gains one stack of night walker every time he uses tempest. Yeah. I think that's great though. But of course, you consume it whenever you use your skill 2 ability. Like the speed buff here. And the dash here. But of course, I think I think it's really nice how like you're not... You're not like... Only in one area. Because you can suck survivors back, which is really nice. I think this is a really nice ability. Especially with the fact that you slow survivors down by a lot as well. So let's turn it on. See, you can suck survivors. Let's suck again. If they get behind that though, let's change now. So let's wind walker. She's not slowed, sorry. Let's speed buff and then wind walker. Okay, she's still not slowed because of the walls. That's okay, let's speed buff. And then wind walker. See, see how see how much she's slowed. Whenever I think whenever they use an ability, it also gets like they also get pushed pulled back a little bit. Which is nice, but it's probably only for like animation type skill ability users. So Windwalker again, gain your movement speed buff. See how much they're sucked back. That is so nice. But his charge attack, his his basic attack is really bad. It's really, really, really bad. His his hip his hitbox is surprisingly short. Yeah, hitbox is surprisingly short. But that's going to be it for Itaqua's in-depth analysis for today. We basically tested out a lot. First is his dash. Second is his suction in which you can basically use when he's moving. The radius is a little bit turner, but that's okay. And then you have Tempest. And then you have the fast vaulting over. I think this is brilliant. I love this personally. I wouldn't vault over pallets with this, but I do love this personally. So yeah, that's all that there is from me for today. And I will see you all in the next video. Bye bye then. Come here, come here, come. Yeah, his. Yeah. Yeah, his 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 attack range. You know what? Let's check his attack range before we go, shall we? Let's let's check his attack range before we go. Let's see his attack range. Let's see his attack range. Normal attack is 3.2 meters, but launching is 0.37. Okay, let's compare with Geisha. 2.7 meters, 3.2 meters. Oh! Itako actually has a longer range. What about charge attack? Charge attack is 3.46. Charge attack for Geisha is 3.0. Oh, okay, that's interesting. What about Axe Boy? 3.12. Uh, no, 3.04. Oh, actually, it's not bad, but it's still short. But anyways, bye-bye for now.